Um, right, uh, today I'm just going to present um, this digital resource and give you a context of the background of it because Alice is the, the visual artist here and unfortunately she can't be here and I'm the archaeologist behind it. Now what SERF, FERF, represents is the Strathairn Environment and Royal Fertiliate Project. Now uh, this is a big project, it's been going on for 10 years, it's uh, settled in Perthshire uh, in the centre of Scotland and as I say it has multiple strands of investigation and it's quite a traditional project of multiple periods. And this is one strand in which we looked at a series of hill forts and we excavated uh, all of these in sort of a sampling strategy to try to get a chronology of it. Again, it's sort of a very much a traditional sort of approach to archaeology in which I inherited uh, and as I say it's just about concluded now in our fieldwork stage and now we're into the processing. And what we wanted to do as, as I inherited the project and how we sort of developed this digital resource in which it's currently basically in a beginning stage. It's in a prototype stage, as you'll see in the back, and not everything's there. And what we want to do is sort of explore the interactivity potential of using, a, as I say, data from a traditional archaeological database, but exploring the potentials of uh, digital visualization and the interactivity. Now you'll see that there's some complications and issues that I have with this and how we're going to overcome this. And this is hopefully what I'm hoping here and tag, we can do some discussion and actually explore that. So again, just to give you some background into this, um, I'd say I've been working on this uh, project for now nearly uh, eight years myself and digging these sites and coming up with stories as we do in archaeological excavations, but survey, piling on these accumulating of different layers of knowledge together. Now, traditionally, we are going to publish monographs of the results. There's an online web page that's very static in some ways, just showing the results and data sets. But as I say, we, we've accumulated lots and lots of different information and this is just a sort of a photo montage of just the, the sorts of information that we do have and, and it's spread across quite a large area. <coughs> so with this resort, initially we wanted to involve a wider audience to these sites which are, as I say, spread over a wide landscape and spread over time. So visiting all these sites also is impossible for everybody to do. So again, we wanted to express all our archaeological knowledge that we gained and give people a sense of this sort of landscape and all the data we've accumulated. Now, this is not a straightforward process. As, as we talked about today, there's a lot of intuitive stuff that we do as archaeologists. There's also a lot of uncertainty and ambiguity that we do as archaeologists in terms of the interpretation and how we layer the different types of information together. Through the excavation, we actually find more questions than answers, uh, and how we then extrapolate that information with survey data, with post-excavation data. So thinking about archaeology and sort of the post, you know, processualist concept of reflexive and interpretive archaeology, where there's multiple interpretations, there's open uh, ambiguities, and just letting that sort of experience open to the public, rather than giving them set narratives wanted to think about how digital archaeology and digital visualization could give us potential in order to do that. So that, that was a sort of a challenge that we had to do. Now, a lot of the methods and tools we have so far are very traditional, pointing towards uh, you know, single narratives. How do you get people engaged with the whole process behind it to understand where we're coming from when we make interpretations? That it's based on our observations and the evidence, but then, then it can go off in multiple routes in which they can discover and why we've chosen one route over the other, and then they can interact with it. And this is quite difficult, and we thought, as I say, digital platform might be the best way in order that people can start to engage with that. But I think we still have to develop some tools in order to do that. Um, one site, as I say, on the resource that we looked at in particular was this site called Castle Law Forgan Denny, 
which was surveyed, you know, in the traditional style of earthwork survey, which involves a lot of observation, visible, visible techniques that are not often appreciated. Um, and then we added an, more information to that by doing geophysical survey, excavation, target excavation, post-excavation analysis. And putting all this information together, we've come up with different stories that sort of overlap <coughs> each other and inter interrelate to each other, but also are sometimes contradictory to each other. So though the first survey of this site shows multiple um, enclosures and uh, house platforms, these, the dialogue behind this and the interpretation behind this is there's, that there is a certain phasing to this. Excavation threw up more as the information that was visible on the surface and has added more complication to that initial interpretation. Does that mean the initial interpretation was wrong or not? That's, again, something to be discussed and discovered. Now, with Alice's reconstructions, we started just, you know, some of this where we allow the, the user to sort of slot through the different sort of possible interpretations and we want to add layering in which they can then engage with the different ways in which we interpret. Um, and currently we are using these stat this very polished and nice, neat sort of reconstructions. And we're still in the process of trying to discover new ways of using visual clues and visual techniques to um, highlight the process and highlight um, when we are more ambiguous about things and where th this interpretation comes from. For example, in this case, we only have evidence initially for the bottom layer where there is stone. We found very large uh, stones for the construction of this wall. But then subsequently, by comparison with other sites in the neighbouring area, we think that there is possibly this, obviously, this timber frame. It's well known in construction of forts. So therefore, we're offering this as an alternative construction method. But this is based on comparison rather than the direct evidence on site. And so how do you then convey that to a public engagement and to, to do that? And so we're hoping to layer this up with, you know, um, basically the director's cut an archaeological dialogue on, on top of this in which people will know when we're, where we're getting our information from and where our evidence is from. So giving over to the audience a bit more you know, credit or <laughs> giving them also ability to question and engage with the process itself. And I apologize right now, you might get a bit seasick for the fastness of this process. Because I'm quite interested in the process and I've been recording you know, how we do things as archaeologists on site you know, doing different parts of the excavation and also post-excavation and seeing how this layers up. But as, and we've been recording dialogue between site directors, between students, between specialists that come on site and seeing how different ideas come about. And we want to integrate this sort of differences of interpretation, again, in a visual clues and visual uh, way and perhaps using more sketchy reconstructions as interpretations change over a dialogue. So again, we're developing this sort of ideas and we want sort of feedback from you and from other people to see how do we do this? How do we best try to develop a new sort of language, a visible language in which, as I say, instead of the nice shiny stuff, which I guess you can see all around you, it's brilliant, but then giving, again, the, the reader or a visual you know, how do we teach then people the visual clues to go, okay, that's where it's starting to be interpreted and, and different, you know, sort of um, possibilities in which then they can interact with and they see the possibilities. Especially with this type of project in which, as I say, we've only touched the surface with a lot of these huge monuments in terms of excavation and detail of evidence. We want to take this further and give over possibilities to the audience and to the participants and to anybody else who might be involved in this. So, as I say, today and over the next course, if you have a look at it, and we have some feedback sheets, yes, over there in the back, uh, just so that you can feedback and, and give us some ideas for the way forward.
because we want to do this, but obviously we're also constrained within a very tight budget with a, a major project, and this is something we're developing and want to push forward to our funders, but also for the future of interpretation in digital archaeology. Thank you. Thank you.